Here I show off the very last part of Sonic Generations that shows off missions. I was not expecting it to be 14 parts. This is a really horrible mission. It's basically, you go through a confusing maze with the Spike Wisp that really goes to emphasize how inferior the Spike Wisp is in Generations. I hate how you suddenly start spin dashing in the wrong direction sometimes because you can't really tell what direction you're facing until you start spin dashing because you're just a featureless ball. I hate trying to like constantly race to to get to Blaze, who can inexplicably fly for some reason. When the hell could she do that? I want to be able to fly as Blaze. Like, I know that she can fire hover. But that's just a hover, and she still has to stand up right to do that. This entire mission is so arbitrary. Why is there a stupid diagonal spring there on that square platform preventing me from jumping on it and just attacking her? Why can't I homing attack her? The mission would be 10 times more tolerable if I could just homing attack her. Why is it that my computer froze multiple times when trying to do this mission? And it was like the third try when I had almost beaten her too. I hate how at one point in the level, the, the you go around the ceiling, and then all of a sudden the ceiling decides to pull a screw you by sending you directly upwards, away from blades. Just everything about this mission is terrible. And the worst part is, they only give you artwork for it. Really? I could have seen that artwork on the internet without having to do anything at all. This one is actually pretty nice, though. Charmy, you're as broken as ever. The thing about this mission is that you press Y, and you can create a tornado above you that you can actually jump out of. And you can create multiple of them at once. So, I practically felt, like, dirty using this over and over again because this is so broken. Why can't I have this as an unlockable skill that I can use whenever I want? That would have been cool. In fact, I probably would have accepted if it took up the entire skill meter. There aren't very many rings in this area, like, at all. So, you're really going to take advantage of the tornado thing here. Like, I like this. I like how it really takes advantage of Charmy's abilities. Like, Charmy can fly infinitely, as you'd expect from a bee. And as you'd expect from someone like, who played the way he did Knuckles Chaotix. And so, he can just create a tornado like that. Although he's not doing it in the way that you expect. Like in Sonic Heroes, where Sonic literally just flies around in a circle. And that, non and that naturally creates a tornado wind. Because it's his wind that he's generating from moving really fast. Here, Charmy is just doing really nothing at all to... Just instantly create a tornado. So there's a lot of differences in the Japanese Sonic Venture 1 script from from the one that we all know. Like, for, when, for one, when Sonic beat Chaos Zero in the Japanese script, Eggman said from the roof, I finally found it, the ultimate god of destruction, Chaos. So he first saw Chaos when he and Sonic fought. I always assumed that that he sent Chaos there on purpose. But it turns out that Eggman only found Chaos after we first fought him as Chaos Zero. And then Sonic says after Tails' plane crashes, I guess I have no choice. Rather than, what am I going to do with you? Which really sucks because I really liked that that line the English version because it was the perfect line for someone who's raising tails. But in the Japanese version he just seems like reluctant rather than worried. These missiles were really making me worried that my computer was gonna crash. But thankfully I only really had a huge crashing problem in like the Blaze mission. And that's it. So that's good at least. I think the level design here is pretty claustrophobic. So I finally beat the final character mission, and that's why I got an extra achievement. 
I love how you get an achievement every single time you beat a mission. It's really satisfying, it really encourages you to beat every single one. I think, yeah, I think I didn't really know I could boost even here. Like the only way I knew that I could boost on the cart was from BSD's playthrough. I don't know how you're expected to know that aside from a random hint from Mama Chow that's random. Now, the biggest problem with this mission is that you know, you're not on the cart the entire time. You constantly have to get off it. And at one point you can fall down a lower route and need to constantly hit switches to, to create blocks so that you can progress. And I don't like how the camera angle was there so that made it easier to get hit by the fire that you're sent right into. Because it was harder to time. And like again, I was so worried that my computer was going to crash that I would regularly take I would regularly, like, I would record in parts. I wouldn't record the Planet Wisp missions all in one go. So, another thing that SD1's Japanese script is, differs from is that the localization of SD1's script, it changed it so that Sonic made a lot more slang. Like, he says, what's up, instead of what's going on, after seeing the police cars. So, like, Sonic speaks with a lot more slang, which actually I like because he's supposed to be a young teenager, so it makes sense that he would talk with slang. I don't know why people whine about it. I mean, if they complain that it's too 90s, well, didn't Sonic have his roots in the 90s? I mean, that is what Sonic started out as I don't know why he suddenly has to change and like he's supposed to be talking in a young way because he's a teenager like he also like he also talks a bit more sassy like because he says big drip only the American version another thing is that sometimes the characters in the Japanese script would speak a bit more formally than you'd expect. Granted, I'm going off a, a dub of it, but still. Like Sonic says to Tails when he sees him again, in any case, it sure has been a long time. Like he says, in any case, instead of anyways. It's weird how he doesn't say long time no see. Instead, he says that line. Even though you'd think that long time no see would be a, a very Japanese thing. But, like, not only does he say in, in a case, but he also says, like, he says blasted a lot. Like, Sonic constantly says that blasted Eggman. Which is weird, because you don't expect, like, Stewie Griffin to say that. So, it's weird. And then again, I guess it is the, the dub translation of it. And, like, when Sonic says, look, it's a giant talking egg. He doesn't actually say that in the Japanese version. He just says, you are Dr. Eggman. He talks as if he just met him in person. It's like, it, it almost implies that he's met him for the first time. It, it doesn't really make any sense. Another thing is that Sonic takes him very seriously. Even in Sonic's story, he never actually tries to act free by taunting him like would be in character. He doesn't even call him a loser. It's weird. Of course, something that is good is that Eggman actually says Eggman Land instead of the awkward sounding Robotnik Land. I do think that's something that's th that they did better. Eggman Land, Eggman's lines in the Japanese version are a lot less hammy and amusing. Like they're trying to take him more seriously than usual. Like he's a lot more subtle. He's still arrogant, but it's more subtle. This is, this is a perfect example of how awkward the level design is for this mission. I was shocked that they actually did another one of these. Like, doesn't the novelty kind of wears off after a while, so I'm not sure why they decided to do this again. The level design is kind of not really working for it. Like, you constantly have walls that stop you and stuff. It's kind of hard to get it over certain walls. Again, this mission will really make you thankful that it doesn't behave like Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Like, you don't need to be jumping at the left side of it. 
it'll just automatically go to the right. Eggman and Sonic Story was generally made more handy for the Americans, which is good because it made him a lot more entertaining. Like, I always look forward to Eggman's lines in SA1. I think his character was actually at the best there. Not only was he actually a threat and not turn into a parody of himself like in colors, but his lines were just so hilariously hammy. It was also, like, the acting also helped with that. But in the Japanese script, they took him more seriously, and it was kind of bland. So Tails, Tails says in the Japanese script, Come on, Sonic! We gotta get busy! Like, that's what he says in the American script, but in Japanese script, he says, We mustn't give in, Sonic! Like, again, that, that's basically an example of how they took things a lot more seriously in the Japanese script. Like, Tails, in general, is a lot less bratty than he was in the American script. Like, in the American, like in the American script, his lines were very bratty. I like, I like the way the Japanese script handled the whole Knuckles got tricked exchange. Like, I don't like how Sonic says fool you instead of trick you. Because, again, saying fool, that's kind of a little too formal for Sonic. But I like how Knuckles says, just shut up. Like, he's embarrassed about it. But then, again, then Sonic basically calls him a simpleton rather than a knucklehead. Which isn't nearly as entertaining. Aside from that, though, the exchange between Sonic and Knuckles was much better in Japanese. I like how, in the Japanese version, rather than saying that Chaos was better than the Egg Carrier, instead, Eggman said, you haven't seen the full power of Chaos yet. Which makes sense. And Knuckles, after the fight, he said in Japanese, sorry, but I cannot follow. At least he sort of came close to apologizing because he literally said sorry, but it's still not quite good enough. And Sonic says in response to that, I see, which implies that he's still resentful, rather than just being like, oh no problem, I don't really care. And Sonic would look at the little girl after he fell from the sky, and he said, huh, he's not here. Like, he was talking as if she wasn't even there. I think it- I think that was a lot better in the American script. I th I like how he- I like his exchange to Zero. Cause instead of- instead of calling him, like... Like, he just said, Heh, no problem, I'll take care of it. He spoke really slyly. Rather than calling Amy a pain, he more characteristically says, Guess I have no choice. Like, I think it was kind of out of character dickish for him to just outright call her a pain. And it's Sonic Story, no less. Like, you think Sonic Story would be the canon one. In SA2's Japanese script, Sonic calls Shadow an imposter, not a faker. It's only Shadow who ever calls him a faker. Which makes more sense. This is the big, terrible part of the level. Now, for the most part, I like this level, but there's so many things wrong with this. Why do you have to rocket through a, a rocket platform in order to get to the goal? Why is that platform moving so that it makes it a lot more difficult to get through it? Why are there other rocket platforms that are there to block your way? Why do you land on top of platforms that, that extend really far in both directions? So it takes a long time to get back down here, and there's a time limit that will constantly be running down. I barely won that. And that insult to injury, I just I just hate how like you rocket through the the like you go through the platforms from below just fine, even though you couldn't in colors Wii. But you can't go back like you can't go back through them from above. So it just it's just annoying how, like, for the most part, I'm happy how they're intangible from below, but in that one mission, it was really annoying.